Today we're going to build a state machine or a finite state machine. If we look at the character control, everything related to walk and idle is controlled by this single script. It seems okay right now, but once we start adding more and more updates, this script is going to end up being thousands of lines long. We don't want that. It would be better if we could have a separate script for each of those animations. For example, let's say we have an idle animation. The idle animation would have a script on its own. This would be a single state. We would also have another state called walk, and again with its own script. And all we're going to do is switch back and forth between these two states. Later, we're going to have other states like attacks, runs, um, sliding, whatever. We'll have a whole bunch of other states. And each of these states will have their own script. And all we're doing is deciding when to switch to which state. All the transitions are up to our decision. You can find out more about finite state machine just by Googling. For now, let's move on. So if we look at our character and see the animator window, this Unity animator controller itself is a state machine. So instead of starting from scratch, writing our own state machine, we could just use this and start adding scripts into idle and walking. So let's create a new script. We'll call it character state base. First, we're going to create a base that's going to be used by all of our states. Double click. We're going to create the namespace as usual. And the script is going to be a state machine behavior. And we want every state to be able to access the character control. In order to access it, we're going to create a public variable called get character control. We're going to need the animator as the parameter. Because by looking at the animator, we can get the component from the parent. The character control. So we'll pass that on to the private variable. And we're going to return that variable. We only want to do this once if the private variable is empty. So if the character control is null, that's the only time we get it from the animator. If it's not null, we'll just return it. Save your script and let's go back to Unity. We're now going to go to the idle animation and we're going to add a behavior, a new behavior. And we'll call it player idle. Double click on it, create the namespace. And this script is going to inherit all the functions from the base that we just created. On state enter means this part of the script will be called the first time player enters this animation. On state update means for every single frame that the player is in this animation, this part of the script is going to be called. Basically, this is just like the update function where this part of the script gets run on every single frame. On state exit means this part of the script will be called when the player exits from this animation. And we're not going to use these two. So just delete it. And we'll go back to Unity and we'll do the same thing with walking. If we look at the character control, let's look for it. It's here. We're going to move this part of the script into the state machine. So copy paste that into player idle update. If we paste this in, we're going to get this error message because this script does not have access to the game object. But remember the base script that we wrote, which we're inheriting from right now? We can get character control 
by using the function that we wrote, get character control, and we're going to pass on the animator. So this is the character control that we can use. Copy paste that in there. And it's the exact same code. Do the same thing with speed. And we'll copy paste this into the walk update. So if we look at the character control, we no longer need the update there. Save all the code and let's go back to Unity and play. We have the exact same code, except idle has been separated from walk. Whether the character walks or becomes idle is now controlled by each of these states, by these scripts. Now let me finalize this by going to the player idle script. And we don't want to be moving the character from here. All we have to do from idle is to switch to the walking animation. So delete those lines. Now for the idle state, all that's left is exactly when to switch to the walk animation. And for the walk animation, we don't need to continue to switch every single frame back to walk. So get rid of those lines. And let me add the return line here as well. Same thing with the player idle. Let me add return here. Actually, for the idle animation, we don't need these lines at all. Because if the move parameter is false, you're already idle. You don't need to switch again. So get rid of those lines. This is all we need. Save all the code and go back to Unity. Let's play. And everything should be fine. This might not look like much, but we're now laying down the structure for every single state in the future that we're going to create. And we're going to be adding more states like attacking and jumping and stuff. You want to be organizing your code into a certain pattern that you can manage and update. So that'll be it for today. Let me just organize the folders. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.